Thank you for tuning in to Thy Kingdom Come broadcast today. Today we got a message entitled, I Know Thy Works. I Know Thy Works. So we're going to begin in James chapter 2, verse 14. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and any of you say unto him, Depart in peace, and be warmed and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needed to the body, what doth it profit? So even faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man saith, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy works, I mean thy faith without works. And I will show thee my faith by my works. So in other words, my faith with my works. Verse 19, thou believest that there is one God. Thou doest well. The demons also believe and tremble. Wow. This is the pastor James, the brother of the Lord Jesus Christ speaking in our text. There is a lot of misleading talk today about faith. Oh, just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. That's true. It's correct. It's in the Bible. That's right. However, our, our, our brother James gives a quite different focus or a tw and a twist to what he's saying. We believe even as the demons believe, but they tremble because of the coming judgment of our Lord Jesus Christ. So faith without works is dead being alone. Does God care if we have no works? Why should God care if, if we only have faith? I mean, after all, Jesus came and shed blood on the cross that we might have a right to the tree of life. Jesus did say that he that believeth on the works I do will have eternal life. But is that all? Do we just depend on what Jesus did and forget about everything else? Is there not work to be done in the earth? Well, of course there is. And Jesus said, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are truly a few. Did God expect us to labor and work? The Bible says if a man does not work, he will not eat. So what about the man destitute, destitute of daily food? Um, if this is just telling uh, him to be warmed and, and filled. Is that enough? I mean, for, the, for us to tell him that? If we don't lend a helping hand to those less fortunate, they will go hungry and die. So our faith, so our faith does not work in this situation. So, so it is in salvation. Our faith will not work if it is not mixed with faith and, uh, and, and works together. So faith without works is dead. So without the combination of faith and works together... We don't have anything. We don't have salvation. Our salvation is not complete. Now, in Revelations chapter 3, verse 7, it says, And to the angel of the church of Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, and he that has the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. That's talking about the Lord there. Verse 8, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door at, that no man can shut it. For thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and has not denied my name. Hold on a minute. Let's stop right there. In every single letter written to the seven churches in Revelation, the angel made a statement or God made a statement. I know thy works. If works were not important, then why is it mentioned to each and every church written by John in Revelation? I mean, if works weren't important, why does God continually say, I know thy works? You can look at it. Look at the church of Sardius, the church of Philadelphia, the church of Laodicea, the church of Sardis. All seven churches, I didn't name them all. But all seven churches, it's mentioned, I know thy works. Now let's go back to the scripture in the text, Revelation 3 and 8, and let's read it again. 
I know thy works. I have set before thee an open door. No man can shut. Thou hast a little strength and hast kept my words. There's the first work right there. And hast not denied my name. More works. That's the second work. And it, did, it didn't say because you believed or had faith. It says because you have kept my word and have not denied my name. So hold on a second. All right, let's 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 divide this. Let's let's kind of dissect this a little bit. So denying God's name was the reason that God was pleased with this particular church. And because he they had kept his word, that that that's also work. So then just having faith in this particular scenario where when God was Going, when he was judging the churches, this was what was most important to God. It wasn't about how much they believed in him. It wasn't about how much, you know, the churches, you know, believed and had faith. Even though the word of God says without faith, it is impossible to please God without faith. For, you know, a man has to come to God in faith, believing that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So that's true. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. But we're not talking about just having works alone. We're talking about faith and works together. And so James, the brother of Jesus, knew something here. He knew that God wasn't just after our faith. He was after us to do something about our faith, to put some faith into action. And this is where... God began to judge the churches in Revelation regarding their works. You ever heard the song, "May the, let the works I do speak for me? That's an old, old hymn that we used to sing years ago, but it's still true today. And Je Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. So keeping his word was also important. Obeying his word doing his word was very, very important to God. But not only that, that they didn't deny his name, that they did not deny the name of Jesus Christ, the name that every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That name above all names. Well, if you don't believe that, listen to this. In Revelation 22 and 16, let's see who's talking in Revelation for a minute. It talks about one other thing. It identifies who is speaking to John in this book. In Revelation 22 and 16, it, it identifies who it is exactly. It says, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root of the offspring of David. And the bright and morning star. So God continually kept saying to the churches, I know thy works. So does God know our works today? Is it important how we treat others? Treat one another even. He said, you will know them by their fruits. His name is very important to him. And obedience to his word is also very, very important as well. In James, it says, faith without works is dead being alone. Even the devils believe and tremble. But I wouldn't want to be those demons, for they are, were doomed to hell. And uh, they were doomed for hell. And I will say they might, they more than likely will stay in hell. Uh, I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. Those demons believe and tremble. So it says, you do well. You believe that in Christ, and the demons believe also. And they tremble because they know they await the coming judgment of the Lord. So when the churches were being judged, they were being judged by their works. In Jude 1 and 6, Jude is the only book in the Bible, I believe, that only has one chapter. <laughs> it says, Jude 1 and 6, it says, And the angels would kept not their first estate, but left them their, left their own habitation, have, he hath reserved in everlasting chains 
under the darkness unto judgment of the great day. He is, okay, now this is the brother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Like I said, James knew something and he's telling us just like it is. He's not biting his tongue at all. Now, this is also another brother of Jesus, Jude. Jude was also the brother of Jesus Christ. And so these two brothers, they knew something. These angels were in heaven before, but became demons under Lucifer because of disobedience to God. So they had works, but they were bad. <laughs> they became fallen angels. So if the angels don't get any favors from the Lord Jesus Christ, then we won't either. Um, we are made in his own image, but uh, so was Jesus. And uh, Jesus is telling us today what we have to do. And let us hear the conclusion of the matter. According to Ecclesiastes 12 and 13, it says, let us hear the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Uh, not a partial duty, but a whole duty of man. I would like to end this broadcast with the word of prayer. Um, and I would like to just say that God knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our uprising and our down, our, our laying down. And he warns us today, even as his soon return, he's soon to return today. Let's begin to work while it is day. For when night cometh, no man can work. And uh, let's go ahead and pray. God, Father, in the name of Jesus, help us to continue to work the works of him who is all-knowing, just and true. Help us in the midst of our words. In, uh, in the midst, the stay in the midst of your word and cover us in your arms of mercy. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to do the works of him that sent us saints and let's continue to believe in God. But let's not just believe. Let's have faith along with it and let's have works. That's the end of our broadcast today. Remember, saints, that the power of the kingdom of God is in you.